Christians say all the time, I go to church. But since when did the church become a building? You see, religions generally have holy vessels, holy people, and also holy rooms. But at the beginning of Christianity, we do not find any of this. The first Christians did not have holy rooms for their church meetings. So where did they actually meet as church? We have to look into Acts chapter 2 and verse 46, where we see that day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and so on. They had favor with all people. That was the beginning, just after Pentecost. And they were meeting there, partly still in the temple and uh, under Jewish habits still, and also in the houses for what that for that which was now more Christian, which the new things that they just had learned and were still learning. So we can say that up to this, the Jewish saints continue to worship according to the law and the prophets in some ways, and to which they they now super added uh, elementary Christian truth and in some ways putting new wine into old skins. So here we see the two things going on in some form still a little bit together in this transitional uh, stage. There's this old reverence and the attachment to the temple, which seems to be retained for a while here still. And then we also know that actually with certainty that up to Acts chapter 21 and verse 20, 27 years after Pentecost still, there was tens of thousands of Jewish believers, which were, as it says there, still zealous for the law. And when I look into the scriptures, I see other examples where we can see that they started actually meeting first in the houses. Go with me to Romans chapter 16. And there you can read in verse 3 that the apostle says, Greet Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. And verse 5, they say, Also greet the church that is in the house. The apostle says, Greet the church in the house. So Aquila and Priscilla had the assembly meeting actually in the house. We find this also confirmed in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, because there we find in verse 19 that the apostle says to the Corinthians now, the church of A churches of Asia greet you, Aquila and Prisca, greet you heartily in the Lord with the church that is in their house. So again, a confirmation that Aquila and Prisca had a church, in this, the assembly, meeting in the house. When you go to Colossians and chapter 4, you find there in verse 15 that the apostle can say, Greet the brethren who are in Laodicea and also Nympha, maybe Nymphas, and the church that is in his or her house, depending on the translation you use, it's his or her house. Not exactly clear if it was a, a, a brother or sister, but he had or she had the church in his or her house. When you turn to one more example, uh, you go to the epistle to Philemon, where the apostle Paul writes to Philemon and he seems to have been a wealthy man and he writes to him and he also speaks of uh, him having the church in his house. Look in verse 1, Paul, a prisoner of Christ, Jesus and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved brother, and fellow worker, and to Apphia, our sister, and to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. So I think we can already make a point here that there seems to be a trend where in the beginning the Christians were meeting in simple houses, just where they were actually living. There are other verses that could show that. But for special occasions, they use other existing buildings as well. Look in Acts chapter 5, you find Solomon's porch, for example. Acts chapter 19, you find the Apostle Paul that is um, separating the disciples in the hall of Tyrannus. 
So we can already see that generally speaking the first Christians met first and mainly in houses. So how come that we got church buildings over time? Well, in the New Testament the word ecclesia means called out ones and it always meant a gathering or an assembly of people. From what we know, the first time actually that ecclesia now was has been used with regard to a gathering place is around the year 119 after Christ by Clemens of Alexandria. That was a, an early church father that lived between 150 and 215 after Christ. And he is the one, so Clemens is the one that used the expression go to church. Maybe for the first time, at least that's what we, what we find um, in history, in the church history. But he was still referring to a gathering in some house, not a special church building. We need to keep that in mind. There is no testimony of a specific church building before the year 300 after Christ. Okay, No reference of a specific church building that was now built actually for a church and as a church, so to speak, as people would say, before the year 300. Uh, after Christ. Until then the Christians met in their in their homes and transformed those in the inside. They took out a wall if necessary. Now, I'm going to give you three examples to show you now the development. A prominent example of such a house is found in Dura Europos, that's in today's Syria. And it's the oldest known Christian assembly home from the year 233 after Christ. It's known by the inscription of the house that it's that old. It was located just two blocks away from the synagogue uh, and it had a main room which could hold about 70 people after a wall had been taken out. So two rooms were joined into one to give them more space. In an annexed room then you have a baptistry that's where they would baptize people and then in another room that was probably used for some systematic teaching. So this transformed house was actually discovered in the 1930s, early 1930s, and the frescoes, which is the pictures on the wall, they were removed and they were taken to uh, Yale University Art Gallery. So these frescoes are very remarkable as they witness what was important to the early Christians. I'm going to show them to you just now. Look here, the story of the Good Shepherd and also of Adam and Eve, which was maybe added later. You can see it's a little different from how it's painted. Then you have probably the parable of the ten virgins. Then you definitely have the Lord Jesus healing the paralytic man. And also Peter walking on the water towards the Lord Jesus. And finally, probably the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well. But this house also bears witness of the beginning trend towards a special location for church meetings. You see, that was a house prepared for this purpose. Now, in the second half of the third century after Christ, the first purpose-built halls for Christian worship were then began to be constructed. They were called Ola Ecclesia. Although many of these were destroyed early in the next century during the persecution of this terrible uh, Diocletian, um, even larger and more elaborate church buildings were then or appear uh, started to begin to appear during the reign of the Emperor Constantine the Great. Now let me give you another example of a transitional building you know from a house church building uh, to a, a real church building so to speak. It's found in Kirk Biz. I'm not sure I pronounce it but it, right it's it's in Syria. I, and it dates from the early 4th century and was built out of stones this time. You see, um, th the first example that we had was built out of bricks. This one is now built out of stones and it took on the architectural form of a hall church from which the multi-aisled basilica was developed later on. And when you look at it, you find there a pedestal for the altar that was set up in the eastern part of the house. Still was a house really, but then a triumphal arc was added, typical of an apse 
that was added actually later. The clergy took then their seats on this raised installation with seating for about 14 people during the church service. So already in Kirkbiz there was a spatial separation of the lay people and the clergy. That's most sad to see. It is striking to see how fast the simplicity of, of, of the gathering of the first Christian was gradually lost. I move now to a third example, one of the oldest surviving church buildings in the world, is, which is also found in Syria. It is the only building partially left in Fafertin. Its apse stands in good condition. It dates to 372 after Christ, as is mentioned on an inscription there. We can be pretty sure that the Christians at this point were already pointing to this building and saying, I go to this church. This is the church I go to. And I could almost hear a clergyman also say, that would maybe say, well, this is not going to happen in my church. But who beside the Lord Jesus can speak about his church? He's the one that said in Matthew 16, I will build my church. And he meant nothing else than a special group of people, living stones themselves, that would themselves be the house of God. So how important to remind ourselves, dear friends, that the church is not a building, but it is the people. We all, the true believers, the Christians, living stones are forming the house of God. May we never forget that. And may we come back to more scriptural ways, how we speak. Let us be careful that we would use the scriptural language and it starts by understanding really deeply what the church really is. Thanks for watching The Church Call. If you enjoyed our content, make sure to check out some of our other videos. We upload new content Thursdays and occasionally Tuesdays, so subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay tuned. To learn more about today's video or to ask a question, please leave a comment below. We do want this to be a God-honoring environment, so we ask for comments to be made in grace and truth to one another. God bless and remember to rethink church biblically.